Yellowstone's Plateau Volcanic Field Evolution, Past, Present, and What's Going to Be Taking Place in the Future. This is from the latest Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, dated April 15, on Volcano Hazard Programs. The Evolution of the Yellowstone Plateau Volcanic Field, Past, Present, and Future. And we see what's been taking place. Uh, there are uh, diagrams and maps here showing how the caldera has been moving from southwest to northeast. And all these eruptions that have been taking place seem to have been traveling. The oldest one being southwest and the newest one being northeast in a straight diagonal line showing that the Earth's crust has been moving right along over that hot spot. Many first-time visitors to Yellowstone National Park have heard about a supervolcano, but expecting a Rainier-like volcanic peak often wonder, where is the volcano? They don't see any peak anywhere. In fact, they're in the middle of one of the Earth's largest volcanic structures, despite the relatively muted topography of the calderas and the volcanic deposits. And this is what is stated here in the latest Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, April 15. It's a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is in the Yellowstone National Park. This week's contribution from Lisa Morgan, Emeritus Research Geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. So many first-time visitors say, where is the volcano? Well, you're standing in it. The muted topography of the calderas and the volcano, volcanic deposits. The active tectonic and volcanic features in Yellowstone are the result of large-scale processes that have been occurring along the Snake River Plain for the past 17 million years. And now are focused beneath the Yellowstone Plateau the Yellowstone Plateau Volcanic Field, YPVF. It's the youngest of many in a 700 kilometer long line of volcanic fields that started in northern Nevada and southern Oregon and have progressed northeast across Snake River Plain. Each of these volcanic fields lasts 2 to 2.5 million years and results in multiple nested calderas. As the North American plate has moved about 2.7 centimeters every year over a deep-seated mantle plume, a hot spot in other words, older versions of the Yellowstone Plateau Volcanic Field, YPVF, were born, evolved, and eventually died. The current YPVF has seen three cataclysmic caldera forming eruptions starting with the first about 2.08 million years ago. That eruption produced multiple ash sheets originating from at least three separate volcanic vents located within the Huckleberry Ridge caldera. It's a structure that's close to 100 kilometers across. The second big eruption, the Henry Fork caldera. Henry's Fork caldera was considerably smaller and occurred about 1.3 million years ago and it was nested within the southwest portion of the older Huckleberry Ridge caldera. The final caldera erupted 631 years ago, created the Yellowstone caldera, and occurred from at least two separate volcanic vents. Much of our knowledge of the YPVF is based on the extensive exposures, detailed geographic geologic mapping, and in-depth studies of the most recent caldera, but all three caldera forming events produce similar geological features. In the case of Yellowstone caldera, the first eruptions were a series of basalt and rhyolite lava, the flows that began about 1.2 million years ago. The actual caldera eruption itself occurred as two separate eruptive events separated by a very short time period, perhaps just days or weeks, the collapse of the caldera occurred just after these eruptions. After the caldera formed, volcanic eruptions, mostly rhyolite and lava flows, 
rhyolite lava flows continued in two major phases. The first phase began right after formation of the caldera and included activity associated with the Mallard Lake and the Sour Creek resurgent domes, which are located near the sources of the two caldera vents. These eruptions lasted until about 450,000 years ago. Following a long period of quiescence, renewed volcanism began about 250,000 years ago and continued intermittently until the most recent lava flow in Yellowstone about 70,000 years ago. The post-caldera lava flows represent some of the largest rhyolite flows on Earth, many in excess of several tens of cubic kilometers in volume extended up to 30 kilometers from their source fence and having thickness greater than 300 yards, 300 feet. The current stage of uh, volcanism in Yellowstone is characterized by abundant hydrothermal thermal activity. There are over 10,000 uh, hydrothermal sources in Yellowstone and it has over 60% of the world's geysers. This began at least 400,000 years ago, but it was probably occurring before that time as well. Glaciation also has played a major role in shaping the landscape. The Yellowstone area was home to the largest alpine glacial ice cap in the western United States, with several major ice advances between 15,000 and 160,000 years ago. Since the last ice age, about 15,000 years ago, over 25 significant, or over 100 meters in diameter, hydrothermal explosion craters have formed within and on the perimeter of the Yellowstone caldera and along the tectonically active Norris Mammoth Corridor. Due to their frequency, every 200 to 700 years and potential level of local impact, Large hydrothermal explosions pose one of the most significant hazards to humans and infrastructure in Yellowstone. While the exact future of the Yellowstone Plain volcanic field, the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field, is not known, we do know from the track of the Yellowstone hotspot that at some point caldera forming events will cease, the North American plate will continue to move southwestward over the relatively fixed thermal plume causing activity today at Yellowstone and the elevation of current day Yellowstone will subside substantially up to 0.5 to 1 kilometer and like we see today in the Snake River Plain the Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field eventually will be covered with a 1 kilometer thick veneer of basalt lava it will be covered with a one kilometer thick veneer of basalt lava. One kilometer, can you imagine? That's amazing. The whole plane is going to be covered with basalt lava. Then the cycle will begin once again. A new volcanic field complete with multiple large nested calderas, lakes, geyser basins, and hydrothermal explosions with accompanying tectonism will form to the northeast of current day Yellowstone. So what have we learned here? Something new. We learned that there are many more eruptions than we were told in the past. Uh, we were, I think basically they're telling us little by little. Uh, we had the major eruptions in 2 million years, the 2.1, the 1.2, and the 640,000. Then they came with the 70,000, and they said, well, we had 80 eruptions since the 70,000 years ago, and uh, the, those 80 eruptions were, a lot of them were lava flows, uh, and uh, basically every 6,000 years we have an eruption, and uh, now they're coming to say that um, uh, this area of uh, hot spots is uh, all the way from... Nevada to Oregon, basically. Uh, we have uh, the West Coast is filled with volcanoes, as we know, and volcanic fields. And a lot of them lately uh, has have had uh, quake swarms. I think it was in the um, uh, 
just north of uh, the uh, Long Valley Caldera. We've had 85 quakes in one in 24 hours, and we have to keep an, uh, an eye out for that. Uh, the um, USGS has not mentioned, to my surprise, the five magnitude quake in Montana that was downgraded to a 4.4. They have not mentioned that whatsoever. Uh, they do. They have given. Uh, Emphasis, of course, to the fact that there is a mantle plume hotspot there. And they have told us that eventually there will be an eruption covering this uh, Yellowstone Plateau volcanic field with a, with a, a, half, a me, half a kilometer to one kilometer thick veneer of basalt lava. Uh, I'm very dismayed at the fact that they never ever mentioned the 5.0 quake that was, uh, I think that was a, a couple of days ago, six days ago. Now basalt, basalt volcanic rock or lava is basalt. When lava cools down, it's called, it becomes basalt. Lava rock, volcanic rock, that characteristically is dark in color, gray to black contains 45 to 53% silica and is rich in iron and magnesium. Basaltic lavas are more fluid than andesites or diacites, which contain more silica. And basalt is most common rock type in the Earth's crust, the outer 10 to 15 kilometers, that is. So you can imagine that the Earth's crust was basically made by volcanoes. In fact, most of the ocean floor is made of basalt. So the Earth's crust above the water and below the water made by volcan volcanic eruptions. Huge outpourings of lava called flood basalts are found on many continents. The Columbia River basalts erupted 15 to 17 million years ago, cover most of southeastern Washington and regions of adjacent Oregon and Idaho. And basaltic magma is commonly produced by direct melting of the Earth's mantle, the region of the Earth below the outer crust. On continents, the mantle begins to uh, a depth of 30 to 50 kilometers. Shield volcanoes, one of them, of course, being uh, Mauna Loa Kilauea, such as those that make up the islands of Hawaii, are composed almost entirely of basalt. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.